Welcome into our first Cape Cod Baseball League show of the summer. I'm Emma Carmen, joined alongside Tim Crowley and Jake Starr. Gentlemen, how are we doing this afternoon? Doing really well. Appreciate you having us on. Excited to talk about the first half of the Cape League season so far. It's crazy to think we're already at the halfway point. So much great baseball across the Cape. So lots to talk about today through the first half. Crazy weekend this past weekend down here, 4th of July. We had over 10,000 fans on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Second summer for you down here. Kind of take me through what it was like for the weekend. Well, it was great, as it was for all 10 Cape communities. Just baseball on the 4th of July goes so well together, especially here on the Cape. You know, so many great activities during the morning. A couple of parades in a couple of different towns, including here in the village of Katuit. Uh, had a great day getting involved in that, and obviously lots of activities at the ballpark. You know, we had the slip and slide. I got on. Jake did not. We'll get back to that a little bit later in the summer. Hopefully, he can make the appearance. But it was great. Just so many great activities. You know, it's a it's a holiday that every year I think gets circled on the Cape League calendar for so much different activities, so much fun, and it did not disappoint once again. Jake, first summer here on the Cape, kind of what was it like for you? Well, first of all, slip and slide. I promise I'll get on that at some point this summer, Tim. So. I got that one uh, on the list, but it was really just a great day, great day. I mean, it was a really surreal experience to kind of see the village of Katuit and really all 10 Cape teams across the, you know, Cape Cod had all their communities come out in droves for parades. I know we had a fan fest here at Lowell Park in the afternoon before, you know, a great game last night. So it's just really cool seeing the community come out and supporting these teams and also celebrating the holiday. Lots of action here on the Cape this weekend. We're going to take you into both the East and the West, all 10 teams, show you a little bit the highs, the lows of the season as we've hit that halfway point here. Crazy it's been, but we'll start with the Yarmouth Dennis Red Sox. Coming off really hot within the East, you know, they're on fire right now. We've got Tim who's going to take us through kind of what is the reasoning behind them doing so well, what players, and why are they having so much success? Well, it really starts with their pitching staff, and Jared Lyons, who is already a Cape League Pitcher of the Week, has done an awesome job somewhere in the range of about 3-1 to one Ks to walk ratio that he's been working with so far. He's looked really strong to lead a rotation, and it's a whitey bullpen that's got a lot of depth to it as well. In terms of the offense, Hunter Haas, Cole Carey doing a really good job as well, leading that lineup, and obviously a historic season for YD as well, with Scott Pickler taking over as the all-time winningest manager in Cape League history. There's tons of history being made. As he just mentioned, Scott Pickler, most winningest manager so far. We'll head over to Brewster next. You know, Jake, second within the East, what is their highs and lows so far this season as we've kind of transitioned into that? You know, it's been a really strong Brewster team. We've seen a handful of walk-offs from that squad as well. Uh, it's a team that we saw here at Lowell Park a couple of weeks ago for a doubleheader. They're a team that, you know, pitching has kind of been on the forefront for them so far. They pitched really well when they were here. Uh, you know, they're a hard step to hit off of. You know, offensively, bats still working to get going. So it's a Brewster squad that, you know, has had a lot of good so far, still working to kind of really improve as the season continues. The Orleans Firebirds really shut it out this weekend, going 3-1. and one. They had a combined no-hitter. What is their key to success when it comes to them doing so well this season? Well, you talk about the combined no-hitter first. I mean, Staff ERA sub 3, 298 coming into the off day uh, today, the day after July 4th. So pitching staff's been really good offensively as well. Travis Honeyman, Luke Kieschel have been two key cogs for this offense as well. And for Kelly Nicholson, you know, the bats have been tremendous. And that's been the story for him really as long as he's been in Orleans. I also want to give, you know, a shout out to Kelly Nicholson as well. When it comes to working with a manager and working in the media, Kelly Nicholson is one of the best in the business. First of all, has his lineups posted on Twitter early in the morning, 5, 6 a.m. some days. I mean, we had a chance to talk to him. We were in Orleans a week ago. Just an all-around great guy. And it's great to see a guy as great as Nicholson who works as hard as he does to have an Orleans scene. It looks like they're really starting to come up and really challenge towards the top of that Eastern Division in the CCBL. The Harwich Mariners, Tim, you know, they've looking for a little bit more success when it comes to the second half of the season. They've had players, you know, out at the Combine, Team USA, upcoming MLB draft. But, you know, what is their kind of upcoming with their 21 games left? Well, they're a gritty team, and I think they have more talent on the roster than than Choate so far, particularly on the pitching side. A couple of really strong starters in Sean Sullivan and Joe Savino as well. This is a group that's always built on their pitching, especially come playoff time under head coach Steve Englert, who, again, has just been here as an extremely, man extremely experienced manager for this Eastern Division team. So I think this is a team that steps up in the second half. I think this talent continues to show out on this roster. And obviously, when you have a guy in Brock Welcome that's going to be back eventually as well, the reigning CCBL MVP from 2021, this is a group that's really talented is going to make a run at some point. We had Brock on the podcast. You know, he mentioned Steve Engler, great guy, great program. I just think this second half is going to kind of be where their light explodes. So wrapping out the East is the Chatham Anglers. What do you think is the biggest thing that they're going to have to do to kind of turn it around for the Anglers? Well, they'll need to, the bats to get going for sure. They've had a couple of big bats. You know, Matthew Hogan's looked great hitting over 300. 
And it's a group that, again, under Tom Holiday, they like to pitch as well. And it's been an interesting group so far. You know, they have a couple guys that have a sub-2 ERA. Obviously, it's been an interesting way to open the season. You have a guy on opening night in Carson Wisenhunt who hadn't pitched in the spring and then comes out in a marquee matchup under the lights at Veterans Field on opening night. So this is a group that I, I think the pitching is going to continue to do a good job. And again, it's just getting more of the bats going, taking some of the pressure off Hogan and just finding a way to stay consistent one through, line, one through nine in that lineup. So now we change it from the east to the west here at Lowell Park. Lucky enough to be alongside both these guys, the Katuit Cataliers, just absolutely red hot. So we're going to go with both of you here on this one. Um, so starting off, just why have you guys been so success successful and who are some of your key players who kind of stuck out? Well, this has been a group that they're really built to win in so many different ways. Early in the season, you know, this is a group that they get guys on, they play small ball, they steal bases, they bunt and run, they drive guys in with productive outs. Then they had a little bit of a stretch that they wanted to have big innings. You know, there was the game against Bourne at Doran Park that they put up six runs and, you know, can find lightning in a bottle. When they started to face a little adversity, again, back-to-back -back losses against Harwich and YD at home, they got back to that under Mike Roberts, and that's what the style of play is that they like to do. We've talked about it on the broadcast before that maybe more so than with other teams in the league, everything is so system-based, which you don't really see in baseball. It's so, you know, based on small ball and good pitching. This was a bullpen that between guys like Jackson Kelly and TJ Brock were off to a remarkable start. Now there's a lot of pitchers going in and out, obviously, throughout the rest of the season. So how those guys fill important roles is going to be huge. But get to it, not a ton to complain about after this start. Jake, you know, this weekend might have been a little bit more of a tough one with the Commodores defeating the Cataliers, but how can we bounce back from this weekend and kind of see the Cataliers get back on their red-hot streak? Oh, the big thing for the Cats is going to be it's a transitionary period. You had a lot of talent here beginning part of the season, and we saw that talent pay off. I mean, you have a guy in Cam Collier who was here who's projected to be a top-10 draft pick. Chandler Simpson, uh, another guy. Kenya Huggins, a couple of names that we're going to see called you know, pretty early in the MLB draft in a couple of weeks from now. So now it comes, you know, the next part of the season. It's that middle part now. It's where a lot of guys are leaving for the draft. A lot of guys are heading home. A lot of really talented guys and a lot of younger, uh, less experienced Cape guys are coming in. So how do they kind of make that difference? We're going to look at the guys like, you know, Cody Schreier at shortstop. Uh, Tommy Troy, who's had a tremendous start for the Cats, had a walk-off home run against Wareham last week. And then on the pitching staff as well, it's been a pitching staff that was, I mean, tremendous to start the season. Six shutouts early on in the season. I mean, an ERA that was sub one for a while. Now it's kind of creeping up towards two, but it's kind of going to be a step. How can they kind of bridge this middle part of the season as we move towards the back third of the season and, you know, pick up that success that we saw so far those first 10 games? How can they kind of respond from this little slow stretch and pick things back up in the second half? Got to ask Ryan Ritter, you know, an amazing honor, Golden Glove. What's been your experience like with him and kind of just as a player overall? Well, he's been fascinating, especially dating back to the second half of last season. This was a guy that you know was known for his defense when he first got here. You know, would find his hits here and there, and then he flipped a switch the second half of the season. Like really, I've never seen for a guy in the middle of a season like that. Ends up hitting 330 the rest of the season. Goes back to Kentucky, and not only did his offense grow, his personality's grown. This has been a guy who has come back. He's Mr. Smiles. He's talking to everyone. The, his development from you know come in, put my head down, do my work defensively too. You know, he's got some big power. We saw that in Hyannis. You know, he's interacting with umpires here and there, which usually you don't think is a good thing, but he's <laughs> joking around, like, after balls and strikes, just, hey, talking about the zone and stuff. So his personality has totally grown, and he's going to be a superstar somewhere someday. So, Jake, we head over from Katuit to Hyannis. You know, the Harbor Hawks have had quite the success this weekend here on the 4th of July. What's making them so red hot as they're slowly creeping up within Katuit? Yeah, I mean, yeah, five points back of the Cats kind of at the midway point of the season. Seems like they've almost come out of nowhere, but they are a vastly improved team. We saw them here last week, a 3-1 victory for Katuit. But, you know, as Coach Roberts said after the game, it was a well-played baseball game between two teams. And I think this is a Hyannis team that can be right up there with Katuit in terms of the top of of the Western Division here in the Cape. And it's nice to see also for that Hyannis community because they're a team that really struggled last year. They were towards the bottom of the Western Division standings. They've really turned things around last year. They're giving those Hyannis fans, you know, something, you know, fun to watch, something cool to watch. I mean, one of the names I really wanted to highlight is Mitch Jeb, the Michigan State product. He has gone in there and he has been a force. I saw a stat uh, earlier this morning that they have, you know, four guys in the top 20 in league batting average, all guys hitting over 280. When you have that many guys you can litter throughout your lineup that are just on-base machines, and you're going to be successful. And that offense for Hyannis has really stepped things up these last couple of weeks, and that's why they're really skyrocketing through the standings so far. 
You know, Jake, there's been a lot of new over and born for the Braves, new manager. They're slowly getting their footing, trying to get over that 500 mark. You know, what is going to be the biggest thing they're going to have to do the second half of the season? I mean, look, when you lose a manager like Harvey Shapiro, when he goes to wear him as accomplished as he is, you're going to take a step back. So now it's that midway point of the season. It's like a transitionary period, that first half with Scott Landers at the helm. So, you know, you need to lean on some guys like Matt Shaw has been a great product so far who has really stepped up for that born team as they really try to just find their footing in the second half. Because this is a born team that was tremendous last year. You know, didn't lose a game through the first couple of weeks of the season last year under Harvey Shapiro. Ended up winning the Western Division crown over Couture in a three-game series before, you know, dropping the Brewster in the championship series. But still, there are high expectations for this born team, you know, new manager or not. And they're finally, looks like they're starting to get their footing under them with Landers and really start to creep up in this thing. So the Braves should be a team to watch in the second half of the season. They have had a lot of ties, you know, this season. What do you think the reasoning is behind that when it comes to either their offense, defense, pitching, and where are those adjustments going to have to come through? Yeah, I think being offensively is going to be the big thing. I think offensively they started a bit slow. I mean, when we saw them uh, as well, they were kind of still slow offensively, and they've started to kind of turn things around. So I said guys like Shaw, guys like Duffy, or, you know, two guys that are towards the top of the league in batting average, they're going to have to be the catalyst towards the top and middle of that born lineup to really control things and to set the tone for that brave team as they really look to kind of weather this storm and get things going towards the second half of the season. So from Bourne to Falmouth, not too far down the road, you know, the Commodores had the best weekend they could have asked for this past weekend against Katua. So where do you think they're going to be able to find the rest of that success for the season? Well, this is a lineup that can hit, and, we, and Katuit certainly saw that over the weekend, and I think it's a really well-built lineup. I think Alex Mooney is a really good catalyst for them at the top of the lineup. He can get things going and provide a lot of different options offensively. Jacob Walsh is a bat that I absolutely love in the middle of their order. You know, big power-hitting player out of Oregon. They got their Arkansas bats coming in as well. So this is a lineup under Jeff Trundy that's really starting to put it together. They've got a good bullpen. They've gotten some consistency in terms of their starters. Falcons a team that's going to start to figure it out because that's a talented roster almost like Harwich that I don't think has fulfilled itself as much in the first half. But as that talent continues to develop, they're going to be a team to watch for in the second half of the season. So wrapping out the West is the Wareham Gateman. You know, they have struggled just a bit at the beginning of this season. You know, you have players coming in and out all the time. You know, they're hosting the All-Star Game, which is going to be so great at the end of July. Where do you think they're going to have to find their key players and kind of make the biggest transition? Well, it's certainly been interesting because it's a good thing they are wearing different jerseys because if not, I think I'd still be watching the 2021 born Braves. <laughs> I'll see Harvey Shapiro making the jump over to wear him, and he certainly didn't come just by himself. Guys like Max Anderson, Peter Burns also making the jump from Bourne to wear him with him. And I think this is a group that, you know, they're starting to find their own identity in wear him, and obviously we don't know for how long, but anytime you add a guy like Owen Diodati back in the <laughs> tremendous summer that he had for wear him last year, that's going to be a huge boost. So a lot to look forward to at Spillane Field. Throughout the course of the summer, obviously, with Wareham starting to figure things out under Harvey Shapiro and obviously the triumphant return of the Cape League All-Star Game. That is all we have for our first show of the 2022 Cape Cod Baseball League season. Be sure to tune in at the end of July for our All-Star Game show live from Wareham. For Jake Starr, Tim Crowley, everyone behind the scenes, the production crew, and especially the Katuit Cataliers organization, we want to thank you so much. I'm Emma Carmen. Have a wonderful afternoon.